so <coughs> I would like <coughs> to thank the organizers <coughs> for the honor <coughs> to present a talk at this conference. <coughs> I think that the fact that this conference <coughs> is re happens is a manifestation of general optimism that mathematics in the future will develop <coughs> in the same way as it was developed before. <coughs> and <coughs> in trying, uh, preparing this talk, <coughs> I started to think that maybe <coughs> I should invent for this conference some new problems <coughs> and <coughs> explain that <coughs> to <coughs> many people that the, <coughs> the progress in these problems will be <coughs> significant for many other cases, many other situations, and naturally I <laughs> did not succeed. And instead I started to think about the past of the theory of dynamical systems. And I came to, to the conclusion that we have uh, many <coughs> interesting <coughs> moments, many interesting <coughs> phenomena in the past, <coughs> which re and <coughs> If this phenomena will persist and will happen in the future, then certainly we can expect serious progress in various directions. So, <coughs> uh, the, the one of the first conclusion is that <coughs> uh, in the theory of dynamical systems, uh, in its <coughs> basic stream, we had several <coughs> striking discoveries after which <coughs> new <coughs> methods, new ideas appeared and many problems which were considered before as <coughs> absolutely difficult become <coughs> not trivial but <coughs> at least <coughs> treatable. And <coughs> it is easy <coughs> to <coughs> uh, write the list of <coughs> these great events in the theory of dynamical systems, and I shall <coughs> write them in more or less chronological order, because <coughs> my topic will be somehow connected with <coughs> all this <coughs> hap all happenings in the past. So <coughs> I write first KAM theory. <coughs> KAM stays for Kolmogorov Arnold Moser theory. Uh, I shall not formulate its essential meaning. Maybe I shall say about it a little bit later. Then the second is uh, so the works of Smail and Osov and others about hyperbolic dynamics strange attractors And especially, I want to mention, as a one very well-known case, is Lorentz model. And the reason why I mention it separately is because after Lorentz model became known, all theory of dynamical system, what is called now in physics literature, the theory of deterministic chaos, <coughs> get, got very many applications in physics, in biology, and in other sciences. Then <coughs> the third topic is <coughs> entropy theory, which started with the work of Komagorov and ended essentially <coughs> start and <coughs> ended essentially with the works by <coughs> Ornstein and his colleagues. <coughs> and 
it was very important that these two directions existed more or less at the same time and they somehow <laughs> helped to each other and their connections led to something which can be just described as <laughs> connections of the chaos theory of the chaos theory <coughs> with statistical mechanics. <coughs> and then the last topic which I want to mention is Feigenbaum <coughs> universality. And uh, maybe <coughs> many of you know that, first of all, it was <coughs> observed numerically. <coughs> and just numerics, first of all, showed that the sequences of period doubling bifurcations persist <coughs> in many families of dynamical systems. And then Feigenbaum numerically observed that the corresponding iterations of transformations look approximately the same. <coughs> and after that, the connections with renormalization group theory in statistical mechanics appeared. <coughs> it was used in the works of <coughs> Feigenbaum himself and Tresse. <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, <Dresse coughs> Collet and Tresse and some others. And about <coughs> this <coughs> topic, I want just to say that <coughs> if <coughs> some <coughs> traces <coughs> of problems which are in 1, 2, 3, we can find in the past, then this topic is <coughs> com was completely <coughs> unexpected. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> the approach to dynamical problems which was used in this case was also absolutely new and probably this is some kind of example which can happen in the theory of dynamical systems that some new ideas arise from the interaction of computer mathematics and theoretical, theoretical investigations and new understanding comes. So, if we think about these four topics, then uh, now it is clear that it is difficult to invent something. For example, if uh, you would ask any mathematician at the beginning of 40s, what does he think of the development of the theory of dynamical systems, then uh, I'm quite sure that nobody would mention any of these topics. Therefore, it means that what one can hope mostly in talks like this is to discuss possible directions where we can expect some serious progress with new ideas and new results of general uh, nature. And for these three topics, I prepared the following, which I shall discuss in detail, that uh, the one which I formulate in the following way is uh, hyperbolic, hyperbolic and quasi-periodic types of motions are generically the only the only stable types of dynamics. <coughs> I don't write down here precise <laughs> definitions because it's can be, it can be different in different situations, but I shall discuss in detail 
some concrete problems <coughs> which we encounter when we think about <coughs> the general problem. The second <coughs> direction is <coughs> can be <coughs> formulated as follows. <coughs> Partial differential equations as dynamical systems and another subtitle which is equivalent is <coughs> qualitative theory of partial differential equations <coughs> Mostly, but not necessary. Just general formulation can be even, even in other cases. And then the third topic is quantum chaos. <coughs> and here are people who can say more about this, especially I hope that Peter Sarnak will comment <coughs> Uh, will make several comments about this either today or later when he will speak <coughs> uh, on Sunday. <coughs> and so I shall start <coughs> to discuss basic concrete problems which appear <coughs> if <coughs> we, we think about it. So <coughs> concerning, <coughs> concerning <coughs> uh, this general question that nothing else like hyperbolic and quasi-periodic dynamics appears, one can say the following, that in case of a Hamiltonian system, it means that the phase space M can be decomposed onto three parts, M1, M2, M3. M3 is negligible and the most mild form of this assumption is to say that its Liu will measure is equal to zero. And M1 consists of invariant tori with quasi-periodic motions on each of them. And M2 says that consists of components of positive measures of positive measure with non-zero Lyapunov exponents. <coughs> this is <coughs> Just uh, uh, precise formulation in the case of Hamiltonian system, but one can give a similar uh, formulation in the case of dissipative system, where we don't have a priori an invariant measure, and we can just replace the property of hyperbol uh, the property of positive Lyapunov exponent by some. Uh, properties of hyperbolicity. I shall speak about this a little bit later. <coughs> and there is, exists even the whole program, which was <laughs> initiated by <laughs> Jacob Pelis, <coughs> whose main purpose is to show that if we consider generic vector field, then <coughs> it has some <coughs> Uh, some generalized hyperbolic property on the limiting points of dynamical systems. Yeah, in generic dissipative systems, there are no tori. Yeah, yeah this is finite dimension. Yeah, there, I, in this topic, I am certainly <laughs> consider finite dimensional case. But if we think about this general <coughs> statement, which is hidden here, then uh, uh, we can see that it has a great impact <laughs> on many uh, problems, for example, in differential geometry or in statistical mechanics. The fact that any Hamiltonian system consists of quasi-periodic motions and <laughs> dynamics with <laughs> uh, continuous 
<coughs> continuously back spectrum is a very strong statement for some questions which are considered in statistical mechanics for dynamical systems with many degrees of freedom. Uh, I, this, I don't want to answer to this question because the notion of generic behavior is different in different situations. In the case of Hamiltonian system, for example, <laughs> uh, we can assume that these sets are generic <laughs> if the measure of the complement is zero. But we also must assume something about generic behavior of Hamiltonians and other things. And this is the part which I don't want to specify. I just want to <laughs> describe the general phenomena which we can have. <laughs> so if we think <coughs> about this problem in more detail, <coughs> then we certainly must consider <coughs> some examples, some first examples, where we can check this <coughs> uh, hypothesis and try <coughs> to see the results <coughs> which are in favor or against this theory. And there is, <laughs> luckily enough, there is one example which is called <laughs> twist map, <laughs> which was studied <laughs> before in many detail. <laughs> so let me describe <laughs> this example. <laughs> it is <laughs> the space of transformation of two-dimensional cylinder where the coordinates on the cylinder are z and phi, z is the vertical coordinate, which is interpreted as amplitude, phi is the phase, <coughs> and the transformation has the following form, z prime is equal to z plus kappa <coughs> v of phi, and phi prime is equal to phi plus z prime, here I must write model of one, <laughs> and uh, v of phi is smooth periodic function of period one, and <coughs> when v is uh, sine of phi, this is called standard map, but gen <laughs> in the theory of dynamical system, but it was known much before in the <coughs> in statistical mechanics under the name of <coughs> Frankel contour of a model. And this type of transformation was considered <coughs> by <coughs> John Mather <coughs> and Aubrey <coughs> and Sir Aubrey for extension for some kind of extensions of Komogorov Arnold Mother theory, <coughs> where they constructed invariant sets which appear after invariant curve of KM theory and disappear. And so now certainly in studying examples of this type, we must first of all to check what KM theory can say about the basic problems. So KM theory existed for almost 50 years. The corresponding technique is very well developed. And uh, there were our recent papers where uh, we have new methods to write analytic expression for invariant theory. And all this leads to conclusion that there is nothing new which we can expect from KM theory. What I want to say is that KM theory showed, gave possibility to prove some number of results and gave us some methods to prove the results. But at the same time, it led to several new problems. And it is a general belief that KM theory cannot say anything about these new problems. And I want to describe the problems which <laughs> remain <laughs> after KM theory. So I can formulate, I can describe them in the following general term. <laughs> Construction of non-smooth invariant sets. So what 
the most <laughs> advanced statement of <laughs> Kolmogorov Arnold Moser theory can be formulated as follows. Suppose that <laughs> we have <laughs> a curve which is given by a nice function f. Z is some nice function of phi. <clears throat> and <laughs> the curve given by this equation is invariant under our transformation. And suppose that the function f has <laughs> three derivatives in the rotation number is diophantine. This word was used today several times, so I shall not repeat its exact definition. So then, <coughs> the Kolmogorov Arnold Moser theory says that this curve is a density curve of other invariant <coughs> KM curves, which comes to this one from both sides. So if this is the original curve, then it is the density point of other invariant curves which comes to, to this one from both sides, from below and from above. But if we look at another, if we look at general picture of dynamics for the standard map, then we come easily to conclusion that the general structure is the following, that there are uh, invariant curves of this type, and then there are open domains <coughs> which may have non-trivial invariant sets inside, but at the same time they have <coughs> trajectories which in some sense are dense on this set. And therefore, from this picture which follows from all numerical experiments, it follows that there are invariant curves for this simple standard map which are limits of other invariant curves only from one side. In other words, for, in this picture, the invariant curve can <laughs> come from below, but cannot come from above. And by this reason, they, they cannot be invariant curve of KM theory, and therefore they are not smooth. And there are <laughs> some theorems which are based on Virchow theorem, which says that essentially this function f must belong to some class 1 plus alpha. And we don't know how to construct this curve. From the other side, if you look at any numerical picture, you see them. <coughs> uh, I shall say about a possible construction of this curve a little bit later. But now, I want to formulate <coughs> for this case of system, <coughs> for this case of maps, another problem. <coughs> so if this is say A, then this is B. <coughs> uh, classification. or description of all KM islands. What does it mean KM island? It is a domain bounded by some closed curve such that this domain is periodic under the action of our transformation and again inside this domain we have many invariant curves so that the area occupied by this curve inside this domain is positive. And again by the same reasons as before the boundary of this Kolmogorov Arnold Moser Islands is a curve which cannot be smooth. And this is another example of non-smooth invariant set which belongs to the same class <laughs> as in the previous case. <laughs> Let me go a little bit <coughs> further <coughs> and to describe what does it mean classification. Classification means that 
uh, all these islands have some kind of hierarchical structure. And this hierarchical structure can be described in the following way. Suppose that we have an island of this type. Then around this island, there are islands of a smaller scale, but of the same structure as the original one. Then <coughs> this island is periodic with a corresponding period, and near this island, there are smaller islands which are periodic with a longer period, which is a product of period of this island times some other number. But the crucial observation, which is not again a mathematical theorem, but just numerical results or result of some qualitative consideration, is the following: that if we <laughs> consider if we consider the whole hierarchy of these islands then there is some scaling property. And this scaling property means that if we consider the neighborhood of each of these islands whose size is of the order of the distance to the next island, and consider the corresponding iteration of our map, then this iteration belongs to some open set of transformation which produces the same island. And if this is so, then, uh, uh, then we can really, uh, then we can hope to prove the, really the existence of all these infinite trees of islands along some uh, maternal islands. And the, this whole structure exhausts all possible islands in the transformation of this time. No, they are stable, but their rotation number changes. Yeah, they are stable, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is, no, it is because it is a boundary curve of the island. If it were, if it were a Kumagor of Arnold Moser curve, then it would be density points from both sides of other invariant curve. But since for the islands we don't have other invariant curve outside, then it cannot be smooth. Yeah, but they are stable in the sense that if we change parameters or perturbs a function v, then these <laughs> islands exist, they just move a little bit, but, but they remain unsmooth. The whole hierarchy is stable. No, it, it, nothing is proven. There are some qualitative arguments which show that this is so, but it's not a theory. It's a it is, no, well, some hierarchies are constructed in the works of Milnikov, but they describe only some part of this picture. So he constructed the islands where the, the hierarchies of islands when the period grow with the number of islands. Uh, the, then these smaller islands come closer and closer to, each, to, to the previous islands, and this is slightly simpler. <coughs> so all these problems <coughs> can be <coughs> studied, apparently, with the help of <coughs> renormalization group theory. or in normalization group analysis. And <coughs> this is the main hope for attacking these problems. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> the basic idea of this analysis is just as in the case of Feigenbaum universality. And it says that <coughs> when we consider <coughs> islands of small size, then the structure of the whole transformation is irrelevant. And if we consider the formulas for the transformation, then they converge to some universal form. This universal form is not known. And uh, the stability property of this renormalization group is not known. But it is, from general picture, it is clear that it has to be so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I think it should be certainly only one because, hmm? yeah, like and fake, yeah. That. No, actually, uh, well, this is a rather subtle question because the answer to this question depends in which space you consider the action of renormalization group transform. If you reduce this this space sufficiently well, so just remove all uh, unneeded parameters, then it becomes one. <coughs> so, but uh, another <coughs> problem which <coughs> appears in this case, <coughs> which I shall formulate in the following way, <coughs> importance of Mr. Tao Tau is golden mean, <coughs> and uh, this number appears in the theory of dynamical system in the following way. If we consider all transformation of this type, then the invariant curve, <coughs> which I described before, exists until the parameter kappa is small enough. But when kappa reaches its critical value, kappa critical, then there is a moment when there exists only one, only last invariant curve. This invariant curve again cannot be KM curve because it is isolated curve. And it was a remarkable numerical discovery by John Green and then there was some theory which was constructed by Robert Mackay, <coughs> which says that for this invariant curve, the rotation number is golden mean. And also there are physical theories <coughs> which say that the rotation number of all boundary curve corresponding to KM, KM islands <coughs> must be also very special. They are not necessarily golden mean, <coughs> but uh, in the expansion into continent fraction, the element of this continent fraction must be constant static with this. So they just correspond quadratic <laughs> irrationality. Yeah, independent of... It's, 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 general, it's a property of renormalization group theory. It's not the property... So it's, it's a property of universality class which corresponds to this case. <laughs> yes. Then, <coughs> so, I can talk about this, <coughs> the property of <coughs> standard map for very long time, even the time allowed by Vitaly will be <laughs> far from being enough. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, but I just want to say <laughs> about this family of maps which I <laughs> wrote before the following. That <laughs> there is <laughs> one <laughs> class of systems where we can prove practically all hypotheses. Sometimes it is very difficult, requires some time, but eventually everything is solved. And uh, almost all problems were solved for the family of quadratic maps. A minus x squared. So recently, for this one para so it is a very simple family of maps, and initially there was a lot of <coughs> numerical experiments with this map. For example, the so-called Mandelbrot set was discovered. <coughs> if we consider the complex values of A and other numerical results, recently there were <coughs> there were remarkable <coughs> theorems proved independently by Lubitsch and <coughs> Gracik and Svontek. Uh, 
which says the following. <laughs> Suppose, so the parameter A <coughs> uh, lies within the interval 0 to 4. This is the natural <coughs> uh, set of values of A. It can be decomposed again on two sets. One is, <coughs> so the sets A1, A2, A3. The Lebesgue measure of A3 is 0. The Lebesgue measure of A1 <coughs> and L2 is positive. And for <coughs> A belonging to A1, this transformation, TA, <coughs> has <coughs> stable periodic orbit. It means <coughs> that almost any point of this interval is attracted to a finite set as <coughs> the time, as the number of iteration tends to infinity. Uh, and for A belonging to A2, we have a chaotic type of behavior, meaning that the transformation T of A has an invariant measure with a density depending on X. <coughs> and uh, this is the theorem. <coughs> so uh, Jacobson proved <coughs> a weaker version of this theory, which says that the set of A where such a density exists has positive Lebesgue measure. And Misha Lurich and Gracik and Svontek proved that the complement to the set of values of A where this measure exists consists essentially of those A where we have stable periodic orbits. So we can <coughs> We can consider the family of uh, sta the standard uh, family as some kind of two-dimensional generalization of, uh, uh, of one-dimensional maps. And if we follow this analogy, then we can formulate the following conjectures or the following statement, the, the following conjectures. Uh, so the whole set, whole set of parameters, parameters consist of three parts again. No, that's the standard map. So. So even <coughs> yes, twist map. So this is the family of map depending on one parameter kappa, and this space of parameter kappa can be decomposed onto three parts. So <coughs> kappa one or a one <coughs> is the set of kappa where. <coughs> uh, Kappa, uh, where T sub kappa has no islands. This is the analogy of the set A2 in the case of one dimensional map. <laughs> it means that in this case, the tra whole transformation <laughs> has positive Lyapunov exponent and is ergodic and stable. Yeah, K, yeah, Km does that. It's for sufficiently large K. And A2 consists of those Ks where uh, T of kappa has islands and sets of positive measure. Positive measure with <coughs> positive Lyapunov exponents. So about <coughs> the first hypothesis, we 
uh, worked with Kasigin, but our attempt is not finished yet. The problem seems, so, so the problems to prove that the set A1 has uh, asymptotic density equal to 1 seems to be very difficult. And about problem uh, concerning A2, conjecture is that the set A1 has density, asymptotic density 1. In other words, if we choose randomly the value of kappa in a large interval value of kappa, then this transformation has no islands at all and consists of a single ergodic component. <laughs> no, it's also not known. No, but m maybe it is simpler to prove that it has density 1 than it is non-empty. A3 is just a complement, and it has measure zero. It's part of the conjecture. A3, which is a complement, is by the analogy of the set. So, uh, so now I stop with problem number one, and I want to spend 10 minutes talking about dynamical system related to partial differential equations in five minutes about quantum case. And then we shall have discussion. <laughs> There's dynamical system. So, in my opinion, <coughs> the <coughs> representation of <coughs> shifts along trajectories, along solutions of partial differential equation as a vector field <coughs> in <coughs> infinite dimensional functional space <coughs> is not that fruitful. Because the space is huge and it has no <coughs> topological properties, <clears throat> That's the first remark. The second remark is that, in my opinion, the number of <laughs> nonlinear partial differential equation is very limited. <clears throat> so Misha explained today that the number of algebraic manifolds is very limited. But <clears throat> in my opinion, the number of nonlinear <laughs> partial differential equation is even less, and because and even more. <clears throat> Nonlinear differential equations, which have some meaning, have also some names. Nonlinear Schrodinger equation, Kortevec de Vries equation, Navier Stokes equation, no reaction diffusion equation, Kuramoto Sivashinsky, and this <laughs> probably almost all, well, we, we can add a little bit more, but not too much. <clears throat> and uh, <coughs> So, in my opinion, <coughs> this basic <laughs> the basic <laughs> questions which we asked about vector field on the manifold <laughs> are not <laughs> relevant. And the most important <laughs> problem is to construct <coughs> particular classes of solutions. So, <laughs> since, <coughs> this since the dynamical system, since usually <laughs> this nonlinear equation are considered on the whole space, then <laughs> the phenomenon which we have here is the appearance of solutions with <laughs> different <laughs> uh, <laughs> with different structure in s with different spatial structure. For example, we can start with steady solutions which are more or less homogeneous. We can then <laughs> we can have solutions with some discrete symmetry, which effectively become <coughs> periodic with some period, then <coughs> these roles can become more and more, uh, can become <coughs> more and more complicated, and we can have what is called disclination and dislocation, which are some kind of topological defect in this picture. So, in my opinion, one of the most important problems here 
is the classification of all this different type of special structure which can appear and all possible types of bifurcations which can happen when we go from one type of behavior to the other. And in this connection, I would like to discuss the notion which is known in the theory of dynamical system as computer-assisted proof. So the first time when, in the theory of dynamical system, when computers were used for giving <coughs> rigorous <coughs> uh, proofs of some mathematical statement was again in Feigenbaum Universality, where, <coughs> uh, where people constructed <coughs> an approximate finite dimensional equation for the fixed point then numerically this approximate fixed point was found, its property were discovered, <coughs> were investigated, and then the rigorous theorem was proven which said that the whole original system has a <coughs> fixed point which satisfies all needed solutions. And uh, we can consider, certainly if we believe that computer gives correct results, then this is absolutely a rigorous proof. <coughs> but from the other side, <coughs> there are many cases where rigorous results are needed, <coughs> computer-assisted proofs are needed, but nobody actually wants to, to do this. For example, it was the case with the Lorentz model, which I mentioned before. Lorentz model was observed numerically, again in a very convincing way. And only recently, a student of Carlesson, Farrell, gave computer assistant proof of the existence of Lorentz attract. So now it is a rigorous theorem that the Lorentz picture is really a rigorous mathematical picture. But people are not excited by this. Well, that we always believed in this. <laughs> and so the future of these directions of computer-assisted proofs <clears throat> was not clear for many years. But it seems to me that in the partial differential equations, <clears throat> the role of <clears throat> this proofs, which go in parallel with numerical and computer experiments will grow because people who study concrete examples which come from experiment always produce <coughs> pictures and numerics which require some explanation on the level of theorems. And this will be some kind of important part of <coughs> in the theory of dynamical systems <laughs> and especially in this <coughs> part related to <coughs> partial differential equations. Then <coughs> I cannot <coughs> refrain myself from spending <coughs> one minute on <coughs> one of the most famous problems <coughs> in all these topics is <coughs> blow up <coughs> in three-dimensional <coughs> Navier-Stokes system. <coughs> so uh, it is a remarkable theorem. <coughs> it's re excuse me. It is a remarkable problem, <coughs> and uh, the majority of people believe that in uh, in this <coughs> system the viscosity is strong enough, and therefore blow up <coughs> does not exist. And there exists a much smaller group of mathematicians, especially of those who work on this problem, which, <laughs> <laughs> which believe that it is just quite opposite. <coughs> and I also belong to this group. <coughs> but I want to <coughs> convince, I want to explain to you that from one side, the situation is almost the same as it was <coughs> Uh, with the fifth postulate of Euclid. There was a lot of evidence that for each point there exists only one parallel <laughs> line to, to the given line. From the other side, after... Some, huh? Yeah, it was absolutely experimentally assistant proof. Yeah, but from the other side, the future showed that 
it is not always true. And if it is not so for the three-dimensional Navier's toxic equation system, then we really come to a very serious problem. Uh, what will happen with, uh, with this system of equations? So there is a general theorem with general result which was proven by <laughs> Foyer, Stemma, <laughs> Maida, Kato, <laughs> and Biali, which says the following. If we consider <coughs> the <laughs> three dimensional flows with periodic boundary condition, and u of k is Fourier coefficients of our solution, so u of k is three dimensional vector for k, <coughs> for each k, and k is the point of the three-dimensional vector. Hmm? Yeah. For, for three-dimensional vector. Then the main result of the papers which I mentioned is the following. That all singularities which can happen for, three, for the Navier-Stokes system are connected with the infinity of the entropy. Namely, with the infinity of this norm. It's for Navier stocks with positive viscosity and without forcing. So for example, one can prove easily that if this sum is finite, then it is impossible that the force moment is infinite. Because if it is finite, then from the whole equation it follows that u of k decay exponentially with k, and all moments are finite. Therefore, if we <coughs> accept the point of view that there is a blow up at finite moment of time, then <coughs> there is some value of vector u of k, which corresponds to our flow at the moment of blow up, Right? for which this number, which is called entropy, is infinite. And in, from the point of view of the original phase space, it means that the flow u of x most possibly has singularity only at one point. And this is a local problem. We can formulate the problem about blow up of solutions in three-dimensional Navier-Stokes equation in just the following very simple way. Suppose that we have a sequence u of k for which the sum u of k squares is finite, but this sum is infinite. This is a point in our functional space. The question, is it possible to find initial conditions near this point with finite value of entropy of this norm so that having this initial condition, we can come to this point <laughs> after a finite interval of time? And this is a local question. <clears throat> local question in the theory of of the theory of dynamical system in infinite dimensional <coughs> differential equation. So I shall finish. With local niche so we have like potential you have like an expansion. No, there is no forcing, it's just very concrete system of equations, but uh, certainly we are near the point where it is infinite. But the energy is finite. So we want to study the dynamics of our system on a very small interval of time. So I want to finish with the formulation of the following hypothesis, which is based also on some ideas of renormalization group theory. I have absolutely no time to talk about this. And it says the following. The sequences u of k for which this can happen must satisfy to the following asymptotics u of k decay at infinity as 1 over k square 
Only this type of asymptotic can appear at the moment of symptoms. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And so, unfortunately, I have no time to talk about the third topic, but maybe there will be some possibilities on the Dead Sea.